Okay, hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining me for this time. Okay, uh, we are looking for chapter 13 in uh, advanced uh, topic in business uh, strategy. Okay, business uh, strategy. So in this uh, job chapter, we try to explain the basic uh, economic basic for uh, limit pricing and identify the condition under which a firm can profit uh, from such a uh, strategy. Okay, and uh, explain the basic, uh, economic basic for uh, predatory uh, pricing. Uh, show how a manager can uh, profitably uh, lessen competition by raising a rival cost. Uh, identify some of uh, the adverse legal ramification of uh, business strategies designed to lessen competition. Uh, and we also try to assess uh, whether a, prof a firm's profit can be enhanced by uh, changing the timing of decision or the order of uh, strategic moves and whether doing to create uh, for uh, so uh, creates a uh, first or second mover advantages right and uh, in our examination of uh, the case of profitable business strategies we have generally taken uh, the business environments that means uh, when we discuss about business direct environments uh, it's referred to num number of competitors, eh, the timing of decision, and more generally the, the, the decision of rivals. So, uh, in order to uh, get, uh, <coughs> in order for us to get understanding about that, eh, uh, We will see in a few of these overviews uh, from this uh, point of uh, chapter. You can see uh, uh, about uh, six uh, point, uh, six action that uh, we will discuss on the chapter. Okay, uh, limit pricing to prevent entry, uh, uh, predatory pricing to lessen competition, raising rivals uh, cost to lessen competition, price discrimination as a strategic tool. Okay and changing the time of decision penetration pricing to overcome network effect okay <coughs> okay and uh, as we discussed before a lot of uh, okay a lot of uh, environment business environment uh, uh, normally outside of manager's control so this chapter uh, challenge all of that so we identify strategies managers can use to change uh, business environments in order to enhance the firm's long run profit so in short in this chapter theme is uh, if you don't like the game you are playing uh, look for strategies to change the game okay so if you can see that uh, there are no uh, control uh, over uh, the business business environment that uh, you are facing that means you can look for uh, strategies to other strategies for uh, change the game okay so the first uh, part of this chapter identifies uh, three uh, strategies that managers can use to change the business environments okay two pricing strategies uh, uh, that we can refer is a limit pricing and uh, predatory pricing Okay. So these uh, two strategies are identified as potential tools for uh, reducing the number of competitors. Okay. So uh, one of the very important points for us to uh, understand limit pricing and predatory pricing that we will discuss. Uh, this is a uh, two pricing strategies to lessen, uh, to reduce the number of competitors. Okay. And then the third strategy can lessen the competition by uh, raising rival, uh, rival fixed or marginal cost. Okay? Uh, we try to uh, implement a strategy that, uh, that can uh, increase uh, the rival fixed or marginal cost. Okay? Unfortunately, all of these uh, uh, strategies involve economics trade-off. Okay? Economic trade-off. That means you have to uh, prepare. Okay? Uh, for your capability, uh, for your capital uh, to implement this kind of uh, strategy. So before implement a strategy, a manager must determine whether the potential benefit uh, or uh, of the uh, uh, potential benefits uh, or maybe the return of the strategies exceed the associated 
associated cost. Eh. So one of the more most uh, more important cost uh, consideration is uh, legal in nature. Uh, business tactic that attempt to boost a firm profit purely by eliminating competitors may result in your company being sued. Okay. Uh, so there are also some legal action possibilities. Eh. Uh, by maybe uh, one or more antitrust authorities okay so some of our uh, country yeah, uh, uh, enforce this kind of uh, law to make sure that uh, uh, there are no monopoly yeah, in in the market okay <coughs> So one of the uh, unfortunate consequences of successful management is that it often lead to Im uh, imitation or entry into the market by other firms. Eh? So of course, entry by competitors adversely affect the uh, profit of existing firms. Eh? Uh, faced with the threat of entry, a manager might consider a strategy like uh, uh, limit pricing. Eh? So as you can see from this point, okay. Uh, limit pricing is a strategy where incumbent uh, that means existing firms uh, uh, prices below the monopoly price in order to keep potential entrant out of the market that means you want to build a barrier uh, for uh, newcomer uh, to join or uh, to become your competitor okay but of course uh, of course uh, goals is to lessen competition Again, if, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is to lessen or to reduce the competition by eliminating potential competitors' incentive eh, or profit eh, uh, to enter the market. Okay. So from this uh, slide, you can see uh, monopoly profit is because uh, okay uh, relate with uh, limit pricing. Eh, if you can lessen or you can. Uh, uh, block eh? you can stop from other new potential uh, firm to join uh, the industry uh, that means you can monopoly eh? you can monopoly so this monopolies is earning positive uh, economic profit okay so no one eh, can be your competitor uh, you can enjoy all the profit eh? so you can see from this uh, slides eh? this is a pricing for monopoly eh? and quantity of monopoly so an average cost of monopoly, I mean all of this uh, shaded area uh, enjoy by yourself, uh, by, by the company that's monopoly of that market. So this profit may induce other firms to enter uh, the market, uh, may induce uh, uh, other firms to enter the market. Okay? Because it's very attractive, they can see okay, the shaded area quite huge of profit. Okay? So question, can the monopolies uh, prevent the entry? Yeah, that's uh, the question that we have to answer and so one, maybe one of the uh, strategy that we can use, okay? uh, the limit pricing. Okay? But as uh, we discussed earlier, okay? they involve the economic trade-off. Yeah? Okay? So if so, it is profitable to do so or not? Okay? Uh, if you have a strategy to prevent uh, the new entry, it is profit profitable to do or not okay <clears throat> all right in this uh, limit pricing you can see incumbent uh, reduces uh, qu qu uh, ql uh, uh, reduce uh, incumbent produce uh, ql instead of monopoly output uh, okay this means incumbent uh, produce ql Term in, in, instead of monopoly output eh, QN, right? So that means if you produce this QL, you have to uh, follow eh, resulting in price PL, eh, resulting in price PL. Okay, uh, I mean you can see uh, the price must uh, below that than PM, eh. it's lower than monopoly price, and residual uh, demand curve is the market demand. Eh. Uh, this dual demand curve is the market demand you can see from here so this, uh, this uh, curve uh, uh, show us the market demand minus uh, QL uh, minus QL okay 
So entry is not profitable because entrance residual demand lies below average cost. Eh? Below average cost. Okay, optimal uh, optimal limit pricing huh? uh, result in a residual demand such that if the entrant entered the produce queue unit, uh, its profit will be zero. So there are no point for new entry uh, to uh, enter at this kind of market because uh, it will result for them to uh, okay uh, to get a zero zero in profit. Okay. So now that you understand uh, the basic rational, basic rational for limit pricing. So let let's take more critical look at this strategy. In our example, uh, the potential entrant was assumed to have complete information. Uh, okay. Uh, in this inform uh, in the example, you can see actually we are assuming uh, uh, that uh, potential entrant was assumed to have uh, complete uh, information about demand and cost. So the strategy of limit, limit pricing did not hide anything. Did not hide anything about the poten profitability of the incumbent's line of business. In fact, the low price charged by the incumbent play no real role in preventing entry. Okay. So the entrant opt to stay out because okay, uh, it's uh, believe the incumbent would reduce at least QL unit, eh, QL unit if it entered. Eh. So in light of this observation, a better strategy for incumbent would be to charge the monopoly price, okay? to charge the monopoly price, and and, and produce the monopoly output. Okay? That means QM. So but threaten to expand output to QL if entry occurs. So if the potential entrant believe this threat and stay out of the market, the incumbent will earn higher profit from this strategy than under limit pricing. Okay? So unfortunately, it is not credible for the incumbent to produce an output of QL if uh, entry occurs. So in particular, entry reduces the incumbent marginal revenue, leading to our an optional output that is less than QL. Thus, the incumbent has incentive to renege on its threat to produce QL if entry occurs. Okay. So recognizing this, a rational entrant would find it profitable to enter the market if the incumbent said is priced at a PL. So there are some potential you can see from here potential problem with limit pricing. So it uh, isn't generally profitable for incumbent to maintain eh, an output of QL once entry occurs. Eh. And rational entrant will realize this and enter. So the solution, of course, of course, incumbent must link eh, its pre-entry price, eh, its pre-entry price to post-entry profit of the uh, potential entrance. Eh. Uh, you must uh, incumbent must link it. <coughs> so in many real world business setting, in many real world this business setting, the pre-entry price may be linked to uh, post-entry profit through commitment made by incumbent. So learning curve effect, incomplete information, uh, okay, uh, incomplete information, uh, commitment, uh, the commitment uh, made by incumbent, okay, and as well as a reputation effect, okay. So limit pricing may be profitable if one or more of the these of these conditions are met, but care must be taken in evaluating the dynamic effect of uh, limit pricing to ensure that deterring entry is actually the best uh, the best strategy, yeah. right? So that means the dynamic uh, <coughs> limit pricing must uh, to to uh, we must uh, take it, taken uh, uh, very uh, careful. Yeah. In evaluate the dynamic effect uh, to limit pricing to ensure that uh, deterring entry is actually uh, the best uh, 
uh, strategy. Even if a link can be forged, it may be not profitable to limit price. Okay. Okay. If uh, the links, you can see, uh, you can handle all of that links, uh, and you can uh, get advantage from that links. It may be not profit profitable uh, to implement limit pricing because uh, limit pricing is profitable only. If present value of the benefit of limit pricing exceed the upfront cost, okay, this is what we uh, discussed earlier about the trade of our economy. Eh? Uh, we must uh, really clear manager must really clear if you want to uh, implement this kind of strategy, limit pricing strategy, okay, uh, profitable. On, we, we must uh, make sure that so the present value of the benefit eh, of limit pricing must exceed of the uh, upfront cost eh? so you can calculate of uh, this through uh, this equation that means okay all of this okay uh, present value must be good eh? compared with uh, upfront cost eh? <coughs> So I don't want to explain more uh, about, uh, or elaborate uh, a lot about the possible link here uh, because uh, you can uh, get uh, more understanding by a few of uh, example like learning curve effect uh, uh, once uh, incumbents come firm uh, uh, produces and involved uh, uh, in that uh, uh, industry uh, so they will learn uh, they will have a, a capacity in terms of uh, their knowledge how to uh, produce more effectively yeah? right okay another one strategy the first one you can see uh, limit pricing uh, the second one eh, uh, to eliminate or to reduce eh, to reduce uh, the most uh, accurate uh, term to use and eh, to lessen competition eh? uh, how that so we can implement uh, predatory predatory Pricing to lessen competition. Yeah. So while uh, limit pricing change the business environment by preventing potential uh, competitors from entering a market, uh, predatory pricing lessen competition by eliminating existing com competitors. Okay, uh, compare with limit pricing, you want to uh, stop from other other competitors to join, but this one, okay, you want to lessen competition. Yeah. Uh, by eliminating uh, the existing competitors, more formal, formally, okay, uh, predatory predatory pricing arises when a firm charge a below a price below uh, its own marginal cost. Uh, so again, uh, you have to remember about uh, it involves economic trade off uh, and it involves a few of uh, maybe you have to consider. Uh, your present value of benefit is much bigger compared to your, your post, post, post value of benefit. Okay. <coughs> so more predatory pricing arises when a firm charge a below price, eh? its own marginal cost in order to drive a rival out of business. So once the prey, eh? or <laughs> what, what we call as a uh, prey as a rival, eh? a leaf the market that means the predator uh, okay uh, the predator or your company eh, uh, the firm engaging in predatory pricing uh, means can raise uh, its price to a higher level uh, so thanks to dampen uh, competition okay so does predatory pricing involve a trade-off between current and future profit okay uh, it's involved again a trade-off between current and future profit it is profitable only when the present value of uh, the higher future profit offset eh, the losses required to drive rival out of the market. So, because of what? Eh, again, you have uh, to remember uh, when you implement this kind of strategy, predatory pricing, you have to offer eh, to customer uh, 
price uh, to to customer the price that's below of your marginal cost so that means you will start running in loss a few maybe uh, in some duration eh? so since predatory pricing hurt not only the prey but also the predator okay its success uh, its success critically depend on the some presumption that predator is healthier than prey <laughs> Okay, uh, healthier, or quote in good, healthier. That means uh, you are bigger, you are more strong. Okay, in terms of your capital. Okay. Uh, so a firm engaging in predatory pricing must have deeper pocket. Must have a lot of financial forces, uh, so resources than the prey in order to outlast it. So reputation effect enhance the benefit of predatory pricing. So taking tough action today to drive a competitor out of the market. So in a repeated play context, it is easier to drive a future competitor out of the market. So establishing a reputation for playing tough against existing firm may induce other firm to stay out of the market. So it may also provide smaller rival. An incentive to sell out to a large company at a bargain price rather than risk being driven out of the market through uh, prediction. Okay, so a number of counter strategies on the part of the prey can significantly reduce the profitability profitability of predatory pricing. So since the predator is selling the product below its own cost, so the prey might stop production entirely. In which case the predator may lose uh, more money each uh, period than the prey okay, so or uh, purchase uh, the product from the predator and stop by it to sell when predator pre predatory pricing keys so the point is that a strategy of predatory pricing is typically more costly for the predator than for the prey it is likely to be a profitable way of eliminating a rival than is similarly situated in terms of size, eh, cost, financial resources, okay, product appeal, but it can be successful in driving a small eh, competitor which empty pocket of the market. Okay. Okay, this is how that we can uh, discuss earlier uh, counter strategy stop production and purchase uh, from the predator predator at a reduced price and stop pile until predatory pricing is over okay, okay and uh, predator uh, must uh, remember yeah, while business engaging in predatory pricing are vulnerable to prosecution under the Sherman Act anti act antitrust act okay uh, this is anti uh, antitrust uh, Sherman Antitrust X uh, uh, available in US. Okay. <coughs> okay. Upfront losses incurred to drive up rival. Okay. May exceed the present value of future. Right. And predatory must have deeper pocket than prey. Okay? This is a potential problem with predatory pricing. That's pre we must take note uh, very careful to uh, in order for us to uh, take this kind of a uh, strategy so this is another way a manager may be able to profitably change uh, the business environment uh. Uh, when you see that, uh, that you are don't like this kind of game, you want to create a new game or you want to create a uh, other game. Eh? So uh, this is another way eh, where manager may be able to profitably change the business environment. Eh? Uh, what we call as a raising rival cost, eh? raising rival cost. Eh? So uh, this is a strategy where firm can increase eh, marginal cost or fit cost or for rival to distort eh, their incentive. Okay, and so you must take note that uh, this is not always profitable, but may be profitable as the following example shows. Eh? So this is where you can see from here. Okay. The 
by, by increasing eh? uh, and then uh, provided the cost of implementing such a strategy are sufficiently sufficiently low uh, the firm uh, that rise uh, rises a rival cost may gain an expense of other firm So it was illustrate and understand of this uh, kind of strategies you can see okay from here uh, try to make it more bigger but sure what I can do okay R1 this is R1 okay okay R2 R1 So in, a, in example of Connor or duopoly, Connor duopoly, okay. So this one is uh, still remember right about the uh, uh, company environments in this uh, Connor duopoly. That means two company, eh? two company monopoly the situation. So initial equilibrium at the point A, eh? at the point A, right, right, and then firm one, eh? so R one raises the marginal cost of uh, firm B eh? that means uh, okay. moving equilibrium to point B okay. moving equilibrium equilibrium to point B okay. so firm 1 gain market share and uh, profit eh? firm 1 will gain market share and profit This is how that you can illustrate how a firm can gain by raising rival marginal cost. Okay. Recall that R1 and R2 are the reaction function of the uh, two competing uh, firms. So the firm produce output of uh, Q1 eh, and uh, Q2. Okay, Q1 and Q2. This one is Q, Q2. Eh? Okay. Not really clear. Q1, Q2. Here. Eh? Q2 is here. <coughs> and the reaction function summarizes eh? each firm's profile maximizing output given the output produced by the rival for example r1 identify the profit maximizing output of uh, firm 1 for each potential level of output by firm 2 so this reaction function are downward sloping downward sloping because each firm produces its output simultaneously and the market price adjusts to clear whether whatever uh, output is brought to market so the greater the amount of output by firm 2 brings to market the lower the resulting market price and thus the lower eh, optimal output of firm 1 okay. so you can see from there eh, point A eh, uh, represent the initial corner uh, equilibrium and firms 1 profits are okay, as uh, pi uh, A1 eh, okay, and are associated with the ISO profit curve through point A so these profits are clearly lower this profit are clearly lower than the profit that uh, would result if firm 1 were a monopolist. Eh? The firm, the point where firm 1 produces of Q1, QM1, eh? uh, Q monopoly 1 unit of output and firm 2 produces 0 unit of uh, output. Okay? Now suppose that firm 1 uses a business tactic that raises its rival marginal cost of production. So due to the higher cost firm 2 now has an incentive to produce less out, output eh, than before okay this is another strategy that uh, we can use okay our manager can uh, decide to use it okay uh, Raise a uh, fixed cost eh, in industry. 
okay, so fixed cost in industry okay <coughs> so firm may also gain by raising its rival uh, fixed cost perhaps surprising uh, surprisingly such benefit may uh, accrue to a firm even when the strategy also raises the firm's own cost so to see this uh, consider an incumbent that's earn monopoly uh, profits uh, let's say uh, that you can earn uh, profit around uh, what two hundred dollar. So if no other firm enter the market, however, if a rival enter the market, the competition that ensues uh, reduce the incumbent profit to seventy dollar. So with the entrant also earning uh, seventy. So since the entrant earns zero profit, uh, zero if it does not enter by earning uh, seventy dollar uh, uh, by entering, so the monopolist will be unable to sustain its monopoly profit unless uh, it can successfully change the business environment. Okay, change the business environment. So suppose the incumbents is successfully lobbies for a regulation requiring any firm cooperating in the market including itself to obtain a license for the government the government and that can cost increase to 90 uh, 90 dollar so notice uh, that the incumbent has raised its fixed cost uh, by 90 dollar but importantly it also has uh, has raised its rival cost by 90 dollar so now if the rival enter the market it will lose uh, 20 okay it will lose 20 so the original uh, is uh, 70 less than uh, less the uh, 90 dollar of uh, license fee okay so that's a simple example for maybe uh, we can see from uh, strategy of uh, to raise a uh, rival cost so if vertically integrated increase input prices in the upstream market you can see in terms of a vertical foreclosure okay, is integrated uh, firms charge rival prohibitive price for for an essential input and then the, uh, the price cost fees yeah. so integrated uh, firm raises input price yeah, and hold the fi final product price constant for, for vertical uh, foreclosure eh? vertical foreclosure strategy wherein eh? uh, integrate and uh, a vertically integrated firm change downstream rival a uh, prohibit prohibitive price for essential input eh? so this is a extreme form of a rising rival cost eh? so what we call a vertical foreclosure occur when a firm that control and essential up upstream input compete against other firm in the downstream market so by refusing to sell other downstream firm to uh, the, the needed input eh, it forces them to seek out less efficient substitute so this increase their cost of production so when no substitute are available the rival are completely driven out of the downstream market because they are unable to acquire the essential input okay so that's this is a uh, quite uh, extreme eh? uh, when uh, they stop uh, the needed input okay what they call as a vertical for closure okay while vertical for closure may be profitable in some instances it is not always the most profitable strategy eh? in particular by charging input price so high that it drive non-integrated firm out of the market so the vertically integrated firm forgoes upstream profit from the sale of the input so vertical foreclosure is profitable only eh? only when the higher profit earned in the downstream market due to the increased uh, market power more than offset the profit loss in the upstream uh, input market Other than that, you can see price cost squeeze. Yeah? Uh, it, it specialized circumstances. Yeah? Uh, 
in uh, specialized uh, circumstances, a vertical integrated firm may potentially uh, benefit from rising cost through uh, price cost uh, squeeze. Here, the vertical integrated firm raises uh, rival cost on the input side. Okay, on the input side, while holding constant or even lowering the price charge for the final product. So this squeeze, squeeze the margin of downstream competitors. The ultimate effect of severe price cost squeeze is similar to that under predatory pricing. Under predatory pricing. Okay, quite similar with that. So it drives competitors out of the market since this tactic requires the vertically integrated firm to charge prices that do not maximize the current profit in the upstream and downstream market. So the firm trade off lower show a short term profit for the potential of higher future profit once rival exit the downstream market. So depending on the magnitude of this trade off and the level of interest rate, a price cost squeeze may be profitable. Profit price cost squeeze also can be used by large vertical integrated system to punish rivals who do not participate in market sharing and other collusive arrangement in downstream market. So while the vertically integrated firm may lose short term profit by using price cost squeezes to discipline rival, this investment in a reputation for being tough can generate higher future profit in market where there is a repeated interaction. So the profitability of, of a predatory pricing, limit pricing and rising, uh, rising uh, rival costs depend on relative benefit and cost of such strategies. So the relative attractiveness of this tactic is enhanced when the operator can effectively yeah, uh, price discriminate among uh, its various uh, customers. So I recall that uh, price discrimination, as we discussed detail in previous chapter, okay, uh, is the practice of charging different customers yeah, uh, different price for the same product. Yeah. For example, uh, all those people yeah, uh, we charge maybe uh, much cheaper compared with uh, other customer. Okay. So in the absence of price discrimination, it is more uh, costly for a firm to engage it in limit pricing or predatory pricing okay, by lowering uh, its price to prevent entry or to drive uh, a competitor from the market. A non-discriminating firm uh, must lower its price to all of its customer. Uh, to all of its customer. Okay, so remember, uh, non-discriminating firm must lower its price to all of its customer. In contrast, if the firm can price discriminate, it can target uh, the price cut to those cus consumer or markets uh, that will inflict the most damage to the rival. Uh, so in the case of uh, predatory pricing. Uh, or potential entrance in the case of limit pricing. So meanwhile, it can continue to charge the monopoly price to its other customer. That means you can you can uh, reduce uh, the trade off cost for that. Okay. <coughs> Likewise, a price discriminating firm using a vertical foreclosure or price cost squeeze can target increases in input prices to those firms that pose uh, the most serious threat in downstream market. Okay, uh, so uh, you can also can implement this kind of strategy. Okay, uh, especially for uh, the rival uh, that you think is the most serious threat for for you. So at the same time, it can continue to charge lower input prices to input uh, buyers uh, that pose no threat in the free market. So this uh, perm permit uh, the firm to maximize profit from input sales to non-threatening customer while raising the cost uh, for those uh, firms who are rival in the downstream market. For this reason, price discrimination can be used as a strategic tool, as a strategic tool uh, to facilitate limit pricing, uh, predatory pricing or rival, uh, rival cost uh, or rising the rival cost. Okay. <coughs> So 
So another way, a manager can profitably change the business environment is by changing the timing of decision or order of the move. Uh, we formally illustrate this as a first mover advantage uh, and, uh, and second mover advantages. Okay. <coughs> So sometimes profit can enhance, okay, but that means when the first mover is paid, commit to a decision first, and at first, when there is a second mover advantage is paid to let the other mover uh, or player, uh, okay, first. Okay, you can get example from uh, to understand of this kind of a strategy. Okay, example of gains with first and second mover advantage. Okay, first example, uh, a player naming the smaller natural number gets a ten dollar. The other players get nothing. So first mover always earns a ten dollar. Okay, so example two, yeah, player naming the larger natural number gets ten dollar. Okay, the other players get nothing. So last mover always earn uh, $10, okay? So if a firm A and B uh, make the uh, production decision simultaneously, yeah? uh, firm A and B make production decision simultaneously, okay? firm A earn $10 by playing its dominant strategy, which is low output, okay? low outputs, yeah? firm B got $10, okay? Uh, from A, let's say, uh, will earn $30. Okay. So, but if A move first, eh, if A move first, so from A can earn $20. Okay. Uh, okay. By producing a high output here. Okay, high output. Okay. If they uh, move first, eh, you will earn $20. So, requires a commitment to a high output. Uh, required. That means uh, if A uh, decide to uh, move first, uh, that means they need to commit to high output. Uh, okay. <coughs> and player B observe A commitment prior to uh, making its own production decision. Uh, so, they will see first. And they will see first, and of course, uh, uh, they will get uh, lower than uh, from A, okay? $5 only. So that's a simple uh, example for us to understand about the first mover and second mover. So a network, a network consists of link that connects uh, different points in your geographic or economic space. Yeah. For example, one way uh, network service flow in only one direction. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, utilities uh, service like some water, some electricity. This is a very good example for one way network. And uh, two way network uh, uh, value. So each user depends directly on how many other people use the network, like uh, telephone, emails. Eh? So network, uh, net, uh, network here is consists of link that connect different point in geographic or economic space. Eh? So network play a profound role in the organization of many industries, including railroad, eh? airlines, trucking, telecommunication, and host. Eh? Uh, of other sector of the new economy such as the internet. Oh, sorry. Okay. This is example a two-way star network uh, linking seven user. So point H is a hub. Uh, sorry, uh, point, T, point C. Uh, 1, 2, C, 7 are not uh, representing users. Representing users. Uh, C1, uh, C1 here. Okay. 
C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. So total number of connection service in here is 42. So two way network that link users exhibit a uh, positive externalities called direct network externalities. Direct network externalities. Okay. So the per unit value of services provided by a network increases as the size of the network grows. So the telephone network will only one uh, user is worthless. Uh, so a telephone network that connect two users is more valuable but worth less to each consumer than a network that uh, connect three users and so on. So with only two users, there are two potential connection services created by the network. So user one can call user two and user two can call user one. So adding one more uh, users increases the number of potential connection services from two uh, to six. Eh? User one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, up to six so more generally if the there are n user uh, n user uh, that means uh, 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 total number uh, that's denoted as a n okay so these are uh, uh, potential connection services so adding adding uh, one user to the network directly benefit all users uh, by adding uh, to n uh, potential connection So direct uh, network uh, externalities, that's a direct value enjoyed by the user of network because other people also use network. So that's uh, what we call as a uh, direct network external externalities. Indirect network externalities, the indirect value enjoyed by the user of network use because uh, of complementaries between the size of network and the availability, availability of complementary product or services. And negative externalities such as congestion and bottleneck that can also arise as a, a network growth. So by penetra uh, penetration pricing to overcome uh, network effects, uh, some problem here. Uh, network externalities typically, typically make it difficult for a new network to replace or compete uh, with an existing uh, network. While uh, a log in uh, with only two users uh, might be easily uh, resolved by communication between the two users, each customer agree uh, to switch to other network. So the transaction cost of uh, such a strategy make it unvisible uh, when uh, there are hundreds of uh, potential millions, potentially million of users uh, who do not know other uh, one another. So one strategy called penetration pricing in entail charging an initial price that is very low, very low. Potentially given even uh, giving the product away for free or buying customer to try out the new product eh, to gain a critical mass of customer. So this protect users from the risk that other users will not switch to the new technology. Users can maintain their use of the existing network while experimenting with the new network. Okay. So that's why the solution here in penetration uh, penetration pricing, the new network can charge an in initial price that is very low. Sometimes they are, will give, give a sample or one month free, two month free, okay, uh, to try it, okay. Uh, once a critical mass of users switch to the new uh, network, a price can be increased. Okay, <coughs> and that's uh, this a new game without it's a comparison between uh, with penetration uh, pricing and without 
without penetration rising. Okay. The first slide here, the new network game without penetration pricing. Yeah. The coordination problem, neither user has an incentive to unilaterally switch to H2. Okay. Even though both users would benefit if they simultaneously switch. So with many users, it is difficult to coordinate a move to back to the better equilibrium. Users may stay locked in at the at, at the red equilibrium instead of moving to green one. Okay. Instead of moving to green one. And with penetration, penetration pricing, okay, a network provider H2 pays consumer one dollar to try its network. The consumer have nothing to lose in trying both network. The green cell is the equilibrium. Users will eventually realize that H2 is better than H1. Realize that H2 is better than H1. And that's other user have access to this new network. So users will eventually quit using H1. At which point provider H2 can eliminate $1 payment and start charging for the network access. This is how you can see the differences between the new network game with or without penetration pricing. So in this chapter, actually, we explore several strategies that businesses can use to change the environment in which they operate. So strategies uh, such as limit pricing and predatory pricing are designed to eliminate competition in the market. For limit pricing to be effective, a firm must be able to link its pre-entry price to the post-entry profit of potential entrants. Similarly, predatory pricing can be used to reduce the number of existing custom, uh, customer or competitors. Eh? Both pricing, uh, limit pricing and predatory pricing involve a trade-off between current and future profit. And therefore, the profitability of such strategies depend on the interest, interest rate and other variables. So additionally, since these practices are designed to boost profit by eliminating competitors, businesses that use this tactic run the risk of being, being sued by antitrust authorities for violating antitrust laws. So we also learned that in situation where it is not possible to eliminate competition, other tactics may be used to change the environment in a manner that increases profits. Examples of such strategies include raising rival costs to lessen competition, changing uh, the timing of decision to create first or uh, become a second mover advantages, and penetration, penetration pricing. So penetration pricing is particularly useful in uh, network industries eh, where customer log in uh, due to direct and indirect network externalities give existing firms a substantial uh, advantage over a new entrance. Okay, until uh, this, yeah, that's all for uh, this time and thank you very much for your uh, attention. So see you next time.